you're at a level now. Surely you don't have people, you know, getting you in a headlock, shouting in your ear. This this will this will tear the roof off. You don't have them anymore, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Last time, oh. uh, play something we all know. Dublin's F four. It is the strawberry alarm clock, and we can now zoom into the home of Jax Jones. How are you doing, man? I'm good, guys. How are you? Good. Good to talk to you. Likewise, man. We're here to talk about bangers, so you're the right bloke to talk to. I know. I feel like this is our second time talking, right? The last song was uh, Out Out with Joel, which was, yeah, went down a treat. And, yeah. um, and now I'm on the Eurodance tip. <laughs> you were going to ja- Joel's house for dinner or Joel was going to your house for dinner? How did it work out? He's coming to my house. Right. I wouldn't go to Joel's house. He ain't got no food. He just has chicken and eggs. <laughs> Which and came first? Chicken eggs and London. <laughs> Literally. Going? Joel's still asking that question. <laughs> but he, um, no, uh, like uh, he he had his cheat day at our house because <laughs> uh, my uh, my mother-in-law was staying with us at the time and she literally whipped up a storm for Joel. It was very good. I'd say he's really polite and it's pleasing and his thank yous and his elbows are off the table and everything, yeah? He's one of those. He's literally... He's some- very polite, yeah. man. He might not have even liked the food. He <laughs> drove away so- and <laughs> said, so Herbs. when you're not making your own bangers, because we're going to get to your own bangers in a second, but like uh, we have a, a thing on the show called Nod Your Noggin where we try and pick absolute classic bangers of all time. What would be the sort of the, the, the top three that come to your mind straight off the bat? I mean, right now in the space that I'm in, <laughs> the Venga Boys, Venga Bus. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, yeah. We played that a few weeks ago. Alice DJ, Better Off Alone. And then I keep, I've talked about this three times this morning. So I feel like you can't come to Ireland without playing uh, Mark McCabe, Maniac Free Pass. <laughs> it should be the national anthem. It should. I heard it is, right? <laughs> we played uh, Energy 52 Café Del Mar last week on the show. And again, it feels like with so many reimaginings of songs going on, that could be up there needing some work. Are you suggesting I do an edit of it? Well. I think so. You'd be better than us. <laughs> I feel like if you had the idea first you should nail it and then I'll just do it for you and you can put it out what do you think is the the vibe though of, of like you know you bring out Where Did You Go and it's it's such a bop and you, you kind of have to me anyway two levels of songs You've like You Don't Know Me that you brought out a few years ago <laughs> that you still hear on radio and then there's other songs not just your own just like stuff that is around for a few weeks and then disappeared is a TikTok causing that to be the shelf life of songs changing or um i think tiktok is like a great discovery tool if i'm being honest with you like i'm being reminded of songs i haven't heard for a long time or songs that i haven't heard before from back in the day and then you kind of see people engage with it it's quite inspiring if i'm being honest with you uh songs kind of shifting out um perhaps it's just like there's a lot of music now yeah there's over like sixty thousand songs being put out a day um, more than ever, if you think about like back in the day when we were on CDs and stuff like that, you know, it was like, I don't know, a few, a few thousand records a week. Do you know what I mean? Now we have that many. So I think there's just more to get through, which is probably why you're seeing songs move in and out quicker. And the music industry is changing. The way people are, are sort of absorbing music now, you know, you could have Jax Jones and Fleetwood Mac on the same playlist, you know? Yeah. I think uh, if you look at, the charts now, I think there was an article that ran the other week in the Atlantic uh, saying that the American charts are made up more of old music than new music now, which is crazy. Yeah. And globally, yeah. last year, Queen were the fourth most played act. Like you still are there cheering and stuff, but number four was Queen. It's like, <laughs> what's going on? I know. I mean, I guess, A, it talks about the quality of those records that they still mean something now that even, like, young audiences can get into it. Do you know what I mean? But I think also you're seeing, you know, not to get too, like, granular on it, but I think older people are joining streaming services, which is what's bumping those records up to. Before, streaming services were for younger people, but now, you're, you know, your, your gran is on stream on Spotify now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> she might have a better playlist than me. <laughs> <laughs> probably well, I know we can go back to clubs and the beat is going to be kicking off properly from April this year in the last couple of years I don't know if you can talk about these things have you had any requests to do sets on yachts for really cool people or where's the weirdest place you've DJed and all of this 
probably the weirdest places I've DJed over the years. I've DJed in a prison in a somewhere it was like a Halloween party and everyone was partying in the cells and then on the gangway that was just quite like weird and it felt haunted if I'm being honest with you. Um <laughs> you it, I, I weren't like Johnny change, Cash yeah. and the, the, yeah it weren't like Johnny Cash like it weren't <laughs> like that but it was more like it was an old prison so it felt kind of haunted. Um I've done the yacht parties before um and they're not as good as you think because they're like noise restrictions. So you have to like wait till you get out to see. So you like stand in silence for 35 minutes on some places. Um, probably my favorite shows are like the kind of like impromptu ones where you kind of uh, just pull up at a house party and there's some decks there. Those are kind of like the best ones to be honest with you. And you get a lot of those in Ibiza. The more successful you get, do you get less nervous by people hovering drinks over your decks when you're working? I enjoy it. Like I like people in the booth. I know some people get quite um, uneasy when people are around, but if they pour something on decks, it ain't my fault. <laughs> You're at a level now. Surely you don't have people, you know, getting you in a headlock, shouting in your ear. This, this will, this will tear the roof off. You don't have them anymore, do you? <laughs> Last time, <laughs> play something we all know. I feel, I feel like you get virtual playing. versions of that. Like um, you know, like where you just get multiple messages. On, it, on Instagram where people are were perhaps annoyed that you didn't play something or like are really drunk afterwards and send you like a hundred videos and you're like, why are you spamming me right now? And then you get an apology the next day, like, sorry, I was drunk. Um, mm. But no, I don't get requests as much. Um, no, not the headlock. Although you do get the, um, <laughs> I get, uh, um, it's actually more the constant, the worst thing about, slightly getting slightly more famous is I guess that you have to balance the love like when you're DJing um, and someone asks for a high five or wants a picture you open up the floodgates to everyone in the front row constantly asking to high five you and that you know like I'm here to play music at this point now like uh, so like I can't just spend this whole show high fiving you. Also, I don't know where your hands have been, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> yeah. I remember a few years ago we were interviewing Robbie Williams in a nice hotel, and he had a thing of hand sanitizer on the table, and he squirted it and apologizes. And guys, I really don't. I hope I don't mean to be rude. If I get the flu on this tour, it's cancelled, and people's jobs are on the line and blah blah. He was ahead of his time. He was, yeah. He's actually iconic. Like, is he actually Nostradamus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he survived uh, the end of the world. If he thought. survived it, yeah. To be fair, I'm a bit like that as well. Like, since uh, we've been wearing masks more, I'm not getting the flu off the planes and stuff like that. So the latest tune, where did you go? The process in writing a tune when you're working with a vocalist as well and stuff, where, where does it start? Do you, you pick your vocalist first? Do you have someone in mind, this is going to suit this person or... It kind of varies. Sometimes I write directly with the person who's going to sing the song, which is kind of like my favorite uh, way to work because um, it comes to life quickly and you can kind of hear what it's going to sound like um, and get their personality into the record. Uh, on this particular song, I wrote it with uh, some other my friends that I've worked with, this guy called Mark Ralph and a guy called Wayne Hector, uh, really cool guys. And we just had the song and I just loved it. I remember I wrote it during lockdown and I ran around the house partying to it. My daughter was partying to it. Like, we just loved it. And then and then I went on the search to find someone to sing it. And luckily, m &EK was able to just bring it to life. And he sounds actually iconic on this song. I love it so much. Well, we're going to have a listen to it now in a sec. Keep bringing out the bangers. Good luck in Ibiza or wherever else this summer. How's you going off? Thank you so much. Joel is welcome back again, I presume, to your mother-in-law's, is he? Yeah, yeah. He put on a good show. So, like, hopefully he'll come back. We hope to see you in Ireland as well. we'll get you I hope so too, man. To we'll get me in a headlock and ask me to play yeah. Mark McCain. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on, it'll bring, bring the house down. I promise. <laughs> Prom I promise. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the phrase in Ireland. I don't know if you've heard that one. I'm a bit of a DJ myself, bud. So, you're uh, like, but it's <laughs> the night and you're in this place. You're not working. The work, At least with those, that's like the same genre, you know, because obviously I play house music. It's nothing worse than when someone asks you to play like Beyonce. It's like, dude, like, where are you right now? 
Okay, Jack Jones, thank you very much for talking to us. Appreciate you guys, man. Thank you for having me on. Big love.